Welcome back to the second video um, of the Summer Applied Week 1 work. We are looking at moments. So this next video, we're going to move on and look, take, use the basic ideas that we encountered in the first video of how to calculate moments and look at something called resultant moments. So if we have a look here, we have a point P. Attached to it are three forces, or three forces are acting on point P. Got one going kind of this way, one going this way, and one going this way. So if I put my finger here, which direction is it going to turn in? Is it going to turn anti-clockwise or clockwise? Now, obviously, that's dependent on many things, including how big the forces are. But we can see that we have two forces that are going to make the lamina turn this way. And one force here, which is going to make it turn in the opposite direction. So let's have a think about those forces. So we've got two forces that are going to make the lamina turn clockwise. Okay, we've got this F1 and F3. So the total clockwise moment is going to be F1 D1 plus F3 D3. The anti-clockwise moment is going to be just this one, F2, D2. So if we want the total moment, this is going in the opposite direction to these ones. So if we work out the total moment, we get F1 d1 plus f3 d3 minus f2 d2. We call this the resultant moment. Okay. Now, obviously, I could have done it in the opposite direction. Okay, I could have done f2 d2 minus these two added together. All that I have chosen to do in this example is look at the take clockwise as positive. Okay, now so to I to indicate that I'm going to put an M and I'm going to put an arrow around it like that. Okay. To say I'm taking moments clockwise. Now we can you can kind of do the same thing with these. But there we go. More generally, the resultant moment is going to be clockwise moment minus anti-clockwise moment. Apologies, I ran out of space. If this comes out as negative, that means the anti-clockwise moment is bigger than the clockwise, the resultant moment is anti-clockwise. If this comes out as positive, it means the clockwise is bigger than anti-clockwise, and it's going to move in a clockwise direction. That's kind of the basic idea, so let's have a look at an example. So we're going to look at example one from page one of the um, Summer Applied Workbook. So this is our example here. The diagram shows a set of forces acting on a light rod. Now it's important that the rod is light. That means we can ignore the weight of the rod. Okay. In later questions, we won't do that. Um, because sometimes that's what we want to find, or in terms of our modelling, ignoring the weight of the rod doesn't make sense. 
you think about a seesaw, the actual seesaw is very heavy. Compared to a child who's sitting on it, it might be even heavier. So ignoring the weight of the rod doesn't make sense. For this example we're going to, just to keep the example a little more straightforward. So, we want to work out all of the moments. So let's first identify which direction the moments are in. So we've got this 5 Newton force here. Okay, we can see the force is going up and we're connected to B here. This is going to create a moment this way. The other two forces, we can see the 6 Newton is going this way. So that's going to create a moment there. And this one's going this way. So it's going to create a moment there. If you struggle to see which direction forces are going to make the thing turn, I would strongly advise doing what I've done here, drawing on the diagram which direction the moments are going to go. So let's have a look at our clockwise moments. We've only got one of them. Now this one's at an angle. So we need the shortest distance, which is perpendicular. This whole distance is 4. So this distance here that we want is 4 sine 80. So our clockwise moment is 5 times 4 sine 80. Now, in terms of my working, I personally like to leave it like that and then stick it all in my calculator right at the end because I don't want to risk rounding too early. If you want to do it and work this out, that's fine. Do that, but do make sure you don't round too much. Generally, unless you're told, we are working to three significant figures. So give any working to four significant figures or more. Okay, but there we go. That is our clockwise moment. We now need to worry about our anti-clockwise moments. So we've got our anti-clockwise moments. So let's do the easy one first. This one here is already perpendicular to the distance. So we just do 6 times 3. This one, again, we're working at an angle, so we need this distance here. Okay, The distance from P to the base of the force is 3 metres, or to where it connects is 3 metres, so this one is 3 sine 40. So we've got our force, 4 times the perpendicular distance. So in this case, we get 18 plus 12 sine 40. Now, we can see that the anti-clockwise moments are probably going to be bigger than the clockwise. Even before doing any maths, we can see that that's likely to happen. Not guaranteed, but very likely compared with the numbers. So we can say the resultant, so therefore the resultant moment is anti-clockwise minus clockwise. Stick that all in our calculator. So we've got 18, oops, 18 plus 12 sine 40 minus 20 sine 80. Oops, let's put some brackets in. Make sure our calculator doesn't have a moment. And there we go. So that is our resultant moment. Now this came out as positive. So we look at here. These were our anti-clockwise. This was our clockwise. This came out as positive. So it means our total moment is anti-clockwise.
And that's kind of, that's it for resultant moments. It's just a case of identifying where all the moments are going and doing the clockwise, take away the anti-clockwise, or the other way round. If I did these, these two the other way round, all that will happen is this will come out as a minus. Because I put clockwise in the front, and this is minus, it means it's going the opposite way to the one I put in the front. So again, it's still anti-clockwise. So the order of these, provided you don't mix these two up and move these around unnecessarily, as long as we've got the anti-clockwise together and the clockwise together, you'll get the same size answer and you can infer the direction. So, practicing this. A few more questions than um, the last video because this is a little bit more useful or more specifically this is the majority of what you're going to be doing is resolving and finding moments and finding resultant moments because what we're going to do in the next video is look at what happens if this comes out as zero and how we can problem solve with that so what i would like you to do is exercise 4b page 74 again we are working in the stats and mechanics textbook, not the pure textbook. As I said, a few more questions this time, still hopefully not too many. So questions one, A, C, and E. Question two, B, D, and F, just for some variety. Then question four and question five. If you want a challenge, then have a go at question six as well. So have a go at those questions. The next video will be looking at what happens when the resultant moment is zero.